All right, welcome to Tech for Big Four conference program, and this is brought to you by AHK. AHK is a German organization, uh, in English translated as Delegation of German Industry and Commerce in Kenya. The location is Alchemist. I go by the name of Bai Moses, or it's Bai Mo on social media. So we, uh, the agenda of the day is design thinking workshops. So these guys are going to be taking us through uh, the process of design thinking and how to apply it in real life or in real businesses to solve problems. So let's go through it. So I'm um, Dr. Kendi Muchungi. I'm a lecturer at Africa Nazarene University. I'm a computational neuroscientist, a design thinker, and an environmentalist. So you're the perfect person to tell us what design thinking means. So maybe you can break it down to the layman. What does design thinking uh, mean to you? Uh, so design thinking, what it means to me is having a formal process with which you think through a problem so that you come up with a, a solution that is desirable, so it's user-centric, um, is feasible, that you have the technique and the technology to, to build or implement, and that is viable, that has business sense. Right. Yeah. Uh, I'm seeing people in, uh, people in groups here, mm -hmm. so, uh, and design thinking is the core business today. Yeah. Uh, can... Uh, does it have to be done in groups, this design thinking thing? Um, it's really good to do it in groups because what happens is we say design thinking is something like this, where um, each individual has like a speciality or a skill, but they also, in terms of their behavior, they have a different kind of behavior and something to bring to the table. Right. And so you'll find like, I'm a computational neuroscientist, you're a media person, we have different perspectives, but at the end of the day, when we work together, we can come up with uh, that unique solution, right? A unique um, idea. But if I'm doing it by myself, I do it in the skew of a uh, scientist. I'm not doing it with the skew of an artist or someone, uh, yeah, all those other beautiful components that make a person. Yeah. All right. So they say men are visual beings mm -hmm. and I bet it applies also to education. So maybe you can take me through what you have on your board here. Okay. Um, yeah. So quickly, there are several steps towards uh, design thinking. There are about six. There are multiple ways of doing design thinking, but the way I do it, I go through six steps. And the first step is understanding what the challenge is. Um, so you clarify exactly what the challenge is because sometimes, say, I'm the one who's issuing the problem. I may, I may think this is my problem, but it's really not. So as a collective, we'll come together and determine whether that's the actual problem and also create a shared language or a shared understanding as to what that problem is. So here we gave an example, right? Maybe um, um, in my challenge I have the word welcome, but not everybody understands welcome. So if I change it to Karibu, the Swahili speakers will be like, oh yeah, I know what that means. If I change it to Bienvenido, the Spanish speakers will be like, yeah, I get that. If I change it to Bienvenue, the French speakers will know. I don't know how to say the German one, but you, you get what I'm saying, right? So we are all uh, sharing the same language. We all have the same understanding of what it is that we're talking about. So the output is to come up with a problem statement. Once you do that, then you observe. You create interview questions where you go and find out from the public or the users of the product that you're trying to solve for. Uh, and so you listen, you observe them, you ask open-ended questions so that you can draw to the actual core of what the problem is. So it's more of data gathering. Data what, gathering is the next step. Yeah. Uh, what is the next step after data gathering? Uh, after you do data gathering, you find now you come and consolidate the, uh, the different points of views that they came up with and sort of share stories within your, your group and come up with, uh, capture all the aspects that you had and then you start clustering the ideas and you find more often than not people actually have similar thinking as to what or similar ideas and so you start now clustering them into groups right. oh this seemed the same this seemed the same this, oh, so this is where you uh, bring the similar ideas together yeah. Right. yeah or thinking the similar thinkings together and then now your team will vote for one problem that they would like to solve democracy applies yeah. everywhere right yeah. <laughs> all right so uh right after that so as you develop uh, a how might we statement 
after uh -huh. that, um, at the end of that process, you will write a statement that says, how might we, our team, if it's Team Shuja, we call ourselves Team Shuja, how might we help, say, Team Tunapanda to solve the problem of um, ensuring more experiential learning and uh, in a sustainable environment so that we can have um, um, students that are transforming the world. Right. You know, something like that, mm -hmm. right? So from how might we? Mm -hmm. And then the big question I think should be how do we? So <laughs> yes, so now how might we brings us to now the do we. We start ideating uh, as a team. So we'll do it individually, first by ourselves. We call it silent brainstorming. After you've done silent brainstorming, now you come up and explain what you are thinking behind that idea. And it's really key to build on each other's ideas. We have a really strong thing where we say, uh, you cannot say no. <laughs> you say yes and. <laughs> right. So if you say something, instead of me shutting you down immediately, so for instance, you say, I like to build a, sk a skyscraper. Then I come and shut you down. I'm like, where will you get the money from? I don't think that's a good idea. Instead, you go like, hmm, that's an interesting idea. And so how can we source for funding for your skyscraper? You see, you haven't shut an idea. You've added an element to allow for further thinking of the idea that you've come up with. So listening is a very important aspect aspect in design thinking. Yeah. What other aspects do you think are very important in this process? Building, up, building on other people's ideas I think is critical. Um, apart from building on other people's ideas, finally coming up with a prototype, something that's tactile so that you can show them. So this was the final idea we came up with and um, what do you think about it? So we'll test it with the person who brought up the challenge and once we've tested it, you'll tell us, ah, I don't think that's a good idea and immediately iterate. So the whole idea behind design thinking is iterating through the processes. So if you they say no that we don't think that that's a good idea then you go like hmm so did i misunderstand the problem go back and iterate until you come back here but the whole idea is to fail fast fail often so that at the end of each uh, i fail quickly so that you can come up eventually with a viable idea see this entire pro uh, process you don't have you're not spending any money really you're just you're thinking and the time and so you have not if you're building software you haven't built the entire software right so when you finally test and it's approved by your users then you can actually now put in the resources to build something you know that is desirable so the user is always the judge yeah. the consumer at the end of the day all right so I asked the big question I think the bigger question now is about the big four agenda uh -huh. and how does all this tie to the big four agenda according to you from your perspective okay so how this ties into the big four agenda is design thinking allows for critical thinking um, without critical thinking there's no way you're going to solve for any problem and so if we can take um, all the participants through the process of thinking using design thinking then they can be able to solve for our problems and um, add their voice to the big four agenda so my name is Calvin Jodisi I work with an organization called Ascent Africa so we actually into the event space we do events that are more focused and geared towards uh, technology and innovation and entrepreneurship so some of the things that we do also in because we do also trainings so, so we still actually do about design thinking a bit uh, we do uh, things like um, uh, health innovation trainings we do like pitching stuff and all this kind of stuff yeah so uh, what does design thinking mean to you? So design thinking is, is, is what, what it means to me is, is basically coming up with an innovative approach or solution towards a particular problem. So it's more like um, and a collective way of coming up with innovative uh, solution to solve a particular problem in an organization or even in, uh, or for individuals. The, the, the big four agenda is very diverse, so which means you know, we have the health sector, we have the affordable housing, we have the manufacturing, um, and then we have, yeah, so that's affordable housing and agriculture. So definitely because it's also diverse, so somebody can choose where you're passionate about. So if you're passionate about, let's say, agriculture, then you, you will focus on working on the agriculture aspect or learning more in that particular space. If you're passionate about building and affordable housing, then you could get yourself there. If you're passionate, like somebody like me who is also passionate about health, so I get to understand what are some of the solutions for like uni, universal healthcare and all those kind of stuff. So I think for me, it's, it's, it's what you're passionate about, and this is very exclusive of everyone. But again, you know, the government will never hold your hand and tell you like, you know, you get to this housing. It's, it's upon you to decide where you want to be. Yeah.
we use the space. Yeah, so you, yeah, you they'll create the space. Use the space and then push for opportunities because nobody will bring the opportunities for you. Yes, we are still at the Tech for Big Four program brought to you by AHK and E4D uh, slash Soga. And with me here is Aragesh and uh, she's going to share with me uh, some of the reasons why she chose Kenya as a country and why she chose this particular approach uh, of design thinking uh, to instill in this uh, upcoming business businesses or SMEs in particular. Karibu sana, uh, Aragesh. I hope you know what Karibu means. Yes. At least. All right. Kind yes, at least. All right. So maybe you can introduce yourself before we can carry on. Okay. My name is Aregash Asfau. Mm -hmm. I'm working for the GIZ mm -hmm. as a program director for sustainable economic development mm -hmm. and uh, for Disoga, which means employment and skills for Eastern Africa, okay. uh, which also incorporates uh, Make IT program. Mm -hmm. uh, why we are here today. All right. So, uh, huh. why did you choose uh, Kenya, uh, and in particular Nairobi, for this particular event? Yeah, maybe to mention uh, Make IT uh, Tech Entrepreneurship Program. It's a German government initiative, uh, which has been um, started in 2017. And we have two countries. It's a regional program implemented in Nigeria and Kenya. So why we selected Kenya is, uh, I think as you are aware of, Kenya is a hub mm -hmm. for technology. Mm -hmm. So it's very much advanced even compared to some of the European countries. Mm -hmm. So Nigeria, the same thing. Mm -hmm. So that's why we wanted actually to implement uh, the tech entrepreneurship Make IT program uh, in the two countries as a pilot. All right. So the theme of the day is design thinking. And uh, what does design thinking mean to you? For well, design thinking is, um, I think the startups, the young people uh, always create innovative ideas. So uh, that's where also the startup uh, starts, especially in the uh, technology area, digital solutions. Uh, there is a lot of thinking around it. So how to develop the product and also while developing the product, these young entrepreneurs, they face uh, a lot of challenges. So such gathering like today, which is organized by GIZ, helps this startup by cooperating with experienced corporates to generate ideas to solve problems. So design thinking means how can I solve a specific problem by exchanging my views with experienced corporates and also uh, the people who are actually buying my service. So it's not a top-down approach, but it's uh, uh, bottom-up. So it helps really to create a product which is very much market-oriented by uh, brainstorming and such a uh, design thinking. Which is always the way to go. All right, so I'm interested to know, uh, in what other ways are you helping the organizations, the startups that you're working with, apart from teaching them skills such as design thinking? Well, we have been supporting in the last years around 50 startups. Uh, the challenge most of the startups have, it's not only a technology, because the technology thinking and uh, bringing new ideas, uh, they bring it by themselves. The big challenge is how to combine the innovation with the business. So these startups mostly need uh, enterprise development training, where they learn how to establish a business, how can they access finances? How can also they develop their business in the future? The second one is how can they access the market also? And how can we bring them to experienced uh, companies, especially in Europe, which are alliances of the Mac IT, and connect them with these enterprises so that they can be mentored, they can share experiences and develop their businesses in the future. So, all this training capacity development, we have been accompanying these people for the last six months. All right. Uh, Be having lived in Kenya for almost a decade now, uh, obviously you've, you've heard of the Big Four agenda. Yes. All right. So uh, some people, critics will say it's very ambitious uh, considering the things that we see happening in the government right now. Uh, do you think it's something that we can achieve? And uh, uh, even if we are to achieve it, uh, how are the ways we can in incorporate the SMEs uh, that you're trying to support right here today uh, in this particular program? 
I think the big uh, for agenda of the, the Kenyan government, uh, of course it is an ambitious uh, 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 program uh, or agenda, uh, but I think if uh, many resources come together and there is a cooperation between different stakeholders, um, I believe that it could be manageable, but it must be organized properly. Uh, especially when we think about SMEs, uh, the big four agenda especially focuses on employment also, use employment, which is a big challenge in Kenya and many African countries. Uh, so I think to address this problem, uh, it's not only we are uh, training uh, young people for employment, but you have to create an ecosystem which helps also startups, SMEs to develop in the future so that when they grow, they will be also uh, employers in the future. So in this way, you can multiply actually the opportunity for young people uh, for potential employment. So uh, I think the Big Four agenda must also support the ecosystem uh, for investment, for startups. This is a financing, which is always a problem for startups. So this infrastructure must be really ready so that we can achieve also the objective of the Big Four agenda. Wise words right there. When you came up with this concept, I'm pretty sure you had a vision with it. What is going to make you happy the most uh, when you leave here today? What is going to make you happy? What is, uh, what will, uh, what is that one thing that is going to make you happy when you see happening to, uh, at the end of this particular meeting right here or conference? Yeah, uh, today's conference is focused actually how startups contribute or how technology can contribute to the Big Four agenda. Uh, so we brought around 100 people here. They are startups, they are corporates, they are also people who are really uh, using the service of these startups. So the design thinking, as I mentioned before, will help really to develop the product further. So uh, my big dream will be here really that the startups really get some input today how to develop their products forward uh, by combining their thinking between these three, four different uh, target groups, develop their business so that uh, they can be big employers in the future. And Thank so you very much for your time. We appreciate you. Keep doing what you're doing for the Kenyan youth and for the African youth at large. We appreciate you, Argesh. All right. Uh, yes, so that is Argash, who is the Program uh, Director uh, uh, for Sustainable Economic Development and E4D uh, slash SOGA. So we're still at the Tech for Big Four conference program and uh, we have the participants that were put in groups to come up with a solution uh, following the design thinking approach and we are going to be having winners at the end of this. But with me right now is Bitty Maina uh, right here with me. She's going to share with us uh, a few uh, aspects of the Big Four agenda and if we have achieved anything so far. That is a big question for you, madam. And uh, But before we talk about that, uh, I'd like to know uh, why did you choose to partner with uh, AHK? Now, I think the partnership with, um, with AHK and GIZ is you're always looking for support and ideas on how uh, one can improve um, in, in your own work. So in our case, we're quite keen on promotion of innovation and supporting startups. And government has, needs to do that, but we don't really have. A, a good understanding of how other governments support that. So, uh, the partnership with uh, GIZ and, uh, and AHK helps us to one, understand what the ecosystem looks like, and two, also we then uh, we will work with them and also with yourselves and uh, with other people in the ecosystem to then be able to develop the right policies to ensure that entrepreneurs can have businesses that are sustainable because the startup space is so full of businesses that die in less than five years. So we also need to actually know how are we going to build and support uh, SMEs to grow? Yes. And uh, I know you, AHK being a German company, uh, people will always ask, what is Kenya to learn from Germany? In this case, I'll ask you, uh, what can Germany learn from Kenya, Kenya being a tech hub in Africa? 
I, I think two things. We will learn a lot. We will learn a lot from Germany. By the way, I think in each case, an association of German businesses. So it's like a business association like uh, KM or Capsam. Uh, I think the partnership is mutually uh, beneficial. We will obviously learn from Germany how they've grown their enterprises and how they have um, supported them. But the character of businesses in Germany, even be they small or large, is also very different from the character of businesses here. So they will also be able to learn. A lot of innovations have come out of here, like the ones in financial uh, services, uh, for instance, because in, in the West, there is a greater diffusion of financial services and of things like credit cards and, you know, and banks, and many people have um, now bank accounts. In our case, many people don't have bank accounts, you don't have a large number of, though there are many banks now, but even in terms of bank accounts, you don't have too many people with bank accounts. But um, mobile money is still big in Kenya. But yeah, but I'm saying that's the same. But now our mobile money has become the solution for the expansion of banking, which they didn't have. And many people, actually, many parts of the world, don't have uh, mobile money as you know as a, as as a, as, a, as a path for savings. But you see, what we have already done with mobile money is that you are now innovating into that space and creating um, opportunities for B2B interactions or uh, business to customer when we have things like Clipper, Nine Pesa, I mean payment of bills. Uh, now you're even using it for credit mobilization with something like Fuliza. So they were doing a lot with our mobile money space, which is something that they, uh, they can learn from. So I, we have we have things to show, and I think we should be very proud of ourselves. Yes. Thank you very much. And you know for a fact, Kenyans are not a patient lot. And we started talking about this Speak for Agenda a while back. Uh, so, and Kenyans like to see something tangible, something physical. Uh, is there progress you can show us, whether physical or something uh, conceptual, in terms of the Big Four Agenda? A lot, a lot. We've spent, obviously, the last year uh, because the Big Four was unfolded, well, the President announced it on December 12th, uh, 2017. So most of last year, we spent time concretizing plans, but also implementation uh, of some things. For instance, with uh, a case like Universal Healthcare, we actually have uh, concretized the plan, and now you have pilots in four in in, in four in, in four counties that was launched in um, in December. In housing, we have also seen a lot of conceptual development on how we can deliver affordable housing and also create uh, schemes for ensuring that the developers are, are are secure enough to know that they can support uh, in this delivery because we, through uh, with the national with with, 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 the, with the housing uh, fund and the mortgage and the mortgage company so that is at least has developed the the, the, the pillars for developers to support uh, government with delivering in manufacturing uh, for instance or something like I've been working on on cotton and textiles I'm actually already seeing greater uh, you know, growth, planting more cotton. We have a textile mill ready to consume that product. Already last year, was our, in terms of our textile export, which is one of our focus areas, it was we sold more than $400 million worth of textiles to the American market, which is our largest, our highest ever our performance. I'm working on leather and increasingly now you actually have many leather products and I'm sure you've seen the same, many leather products available uh, in the market. Uh, with the automotive sector, we're making decisions within government on how to spur more assembly through uh, ensuring that government buys locally assembled vehicles. So it's not actually just ideas, it's actually practical things and people and you're seeing uh, and, 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 and you're seeing results uh, but it's early days yet it's early days and of course some of these plans for last year is building on plans that we had been working on because it's not a new concept with manufacturing we've been developing it um, over time so 
we're just starting to see uh, rip those results. Thank you very much. Uh, on to my last question now. Uh, statistics show that unemployment rate is very high in Kenya, but the same statistics show that Kenyans are heavily transacting through these mobile money tra uh, platforms, which means they have, they have found a way to make money some way, somehow. So uh, is it a good time to be uh, an SME owner in Kenya right now? Is there hope for them? I think, I th I th I think so. There's, uh, there's hope. I, I think what we'd like, we, Kenyans like to say we hustle, but that hustle is business. I think the best thing is that you need to also harness that into a formal business that can grow so that you're not moving from shifting from one insecure engagement and then something new brand idea comes and then you hustle that direction again because no business grows from without you know without tenacity and without you putting down roots and developing a product that people are wanting to buy so we really want to encourage even those guys who are doing the hustle as we call it is what is it that you're doing and how can you um, harness that and, and make sure that it's got opportunities for growth. Right. Yeah. Thank you very much, Madam Pias, and keep the vision alive. All right, thank you very much. All right, uh, cheers. Yes, so we have come to the end of this, the Tech for B4 conference brought to you by AHK, live at the Alchemist. I go by the name of Barry Moses or it's by more on every social media platform. So if you're planning to get into the startups or if you're planning to start something on your own, hope you learned something from, uh, from the design thinking workshop. Uh, so shout out to Frank behind the camera, shout out to Emmanuel, shout out to Max, shout out to Masai KTA and shout out to Kate as well and everybody who made this possible. Bye bye.